Greetings. My name is Maynard Pittendray. I am a Presbyterian pastor and I am an astronomer. And today I'd like to talk to you about the Star of Bethlehem. The Star of Bethlehem is told in Matthew's Gospel. There are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Two of them, Matthew and Luke, tell the story of Christ's birth. One of them tells the story of the visit of the Magi and the Star of Bethlehem. We find it in Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay homage to him. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. Well, of course they were frightened. This was political instability as far as Herod was concerned. And what happens in verse 7 is that he has a conference with the wise men or the magi. And picking up in verse 9, it says, When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Now there is a lot to unpack in this brief passage. Uh, we normally picture this event as happening the night that Jesus was born on December 25th in the year one. First, we got to get rid of that preconception before we think about what was happening astronomically at the time of Christ's birth. Uh, first of all, Jesus was not born on December 25th. Uh, this is fairly commonly accepted. Uh, secondly, no matter what day Jesus was born, uh, the Magi did not visit the night of Christ's birth. We know that because I just read uh, a passage that talked about the Magi visiting Christ in a house. Most people will remember that Jesus was born in a stable. Uh, they laid the baby in a manger, a uh, feeding trough for the animals, and uh, because there was no room for them in the inn, the fact that the Magi visit him in a house indicates that they had time to settle in uh, for a long stay. Um, later in the passage of Matthew chapter 2, in verse 16, it says this, when Herod saw that he'd been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or younger, according to the time he had learned from the wise men. So this event of the visit of the wise men could have taken place days, months, or even a couple of years after the birth of Christ. And of course, when it comes to uh, Christ being born in year 1 AD, uh, that's very unlikely. It was centuries after the birth of Christ that people decided to uh, measure the calendar based on the birth of Christ with BC, before Christ, and AD, uh, the year of our Lord uh, in Latin. And the fact that they hit it as close as they did amazes me. Uh, they were off by a few years. Uh, scholars believe that it was somewhere between 6 and 4 BC that Christ was born. One indication of this, and there are several little clues through Scripture about the time of this, like uh, beginning the ministry in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar and things like that. But the most prominent for us right now is this particular Herod died in 4 BC, and Josephus, uh, the historian, the Jewish historian, gives us some uh, clear details on this. Now, before we look at what's happening in astronomy during the years 6 to 4 BC, let's think about what are we looking for. Matthew gives us at least four characteristics of the star of Bethlehem. First, the star appears at its rising according to the Magi, or the wise men. 
At its rising, that means in the east, and some translations will say they saw the star in the east. Second, Matthew describes the star as one that moves. Now, all stars move, but stars are so far away that unless you've got a telescope and a camera and a lot of patience, you're not going to discern the movement of the stars. I've been taking uh, photographs of several stars with what's called a high proper motion for about 35 years, and I can track their motion. Uh, the star Captain is one that's uh, very easy to photograph and to see its movement from year to year. And uh, But without the equipment that I've got to the uh, unaided eye, you're going to simply see stars that are fixed for all eternity from your perspective. But the Magi said this star moved. And third characteristic, the star of Bethlehem appears and then disappears and then reappears again. Uh, and finally, it hangs over a location, such as the city of Bethlehem or a house where Jesus is. What kind of description is that? Well, in the ancient mind, from their perspective, not knowing the distances of the comets or the stars or whatever they were seeing in the heavens, and not knowing they were so far away, they often described comets and other uh, phenomena as hanging over a mountain or a city or a house. Astronomers can suggest a handful of explanations as to what the star of Bethlehem might have been. Comet, supernova, nova, meteor, conjunction. All of these, when you compare them with the characteristics of the star of Bethlehem that Matthew gives us, only two of them stand out, comet and a conjunction. A conjunction is when two or more planets move very, very close together. Scholars believe that uh, Christ was born, as I say, between 6 and 4 BC. Were there any conjunctions during that time? Yes. In 7 BC, there were conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn in May, September, and December. The Magi would have seen these conjunctions as a call for them to pack up their camels and make the long trip to Jerusalem and from there to Bethlehem. And so that fits the story of Matthew's Gospel. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn moving close together, and any event in the sky in ancient times was called a star. A conjunction was called a temporary star. A comet would have been called a broom star, because sometimes they look like brooms with the straw, the tails. Uh, so the moving together of a, con of a conjunction uh, in uh, May, September, and December, and 7 BC could have called the Magi to make their trip. Now here's an interesting thing, is that in February in the year 6 BC, which is in that range where we think Christ was born, there was another conjunction, Saturn and Jupiter and Mars. There were some interesting things about these conjunctions. The first one would have been visible to the Magi in the eastern skies, fitting Matthew's criteria. The last one in 6 BC, they would have seen from Jerusalem after meeting with Herod. That conjunction would have been visible in the southwestern skies. Now from Jerusalem, what is southwest? Bethlehem, where Christ was born. We have a great opportunity on December 21st to observe what the Magi could have seen. I, I firmly believe that the conjunction is a real possibility for the star of Bethlehem. Conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn come every 19.6 years. But this close 
is an 800 year event. It's worth watching. If you do not have binoculars or a small telescope, don't worry because with your unaided eye, you'll be seeing the very same thing that the Magi may have seen if the conjunction was the star Bethlehem. It is well worth watching tonight and every night as we approach December 21st and afterwards because you'll see these two planets come closer and closer together. To see this, about half an hour after sunset, go outside, look in the southwestern sky. You should be able to see Jupiter. Saturn will appear a little above the star that is actually planet Jupiter. Um, these are two wonderful star-like objects to observe with the unaided eye, especially during this conjunction. I wish you well and clear skies ahead.